In our previous videos, we've been talking about how we maximize the benefits given our constraints and our costs. And we were representing the constraint and the costs with the budget line, right? The slope of the budget line shows you the opportunity cost and the budget line itself shows you your constraint. We then were looking at how we maximize that satisfaction or utility and we represent that graphically with indifference curves. So what we want to look at now is how do we decide how much we're actually willing and able to buy of a particular good. So what is that optimal consumption point? That point that which maximizes the benefit given the costs and the constraints. Well, this takes us back to earlier discussions we had about people who are rational. So what was the economic definition of rational? Right. So you are rational if the marginal benefit is more than the marginal cost, so the extra value to you is more than the extra cost, and you do it. Forgot to put on my glove here. I get lots of marks on my screen if I don't wear my little black glove. So you are rational if the marginal benefit is more than the marginal cost, and you do it. If the marginal benefit, the extra value to you, is less than the extra cost, then if you are a rational person, if the extra value to you is less than the extra cost to you, you should not do it. So here we're looking at decisions in terms of how much to get of one item or another. So if the extra benefit is more than the extra cost, we should get more. If the extra benefit's less than the extra cost, we should get less. So where do you stop moving between getting more and getting less? Well, we're looking for that point at which the marginal benefit is equal to the marginal cost. So how do we find this with our graphs? Well, we have to look at what is the marginal cost and what is the marginal benefit. So when we looked at the marginal cost, the marginal cost is the extra cost to get another unit. If we're going to get one more video game, the extra cost of getting the video game was represented by the amount of phone apps we had to give up. So when we look at the marginal cost, we're really talking about the opportunity cost. What are we sacrificing? When we look at the marginal benefit, we're looking at the extra that we gain from having something. And the representation of that extra benefit is the marginal rate of substitution. So what we wanna do when we maximize our satisfaction given our costs and constraints is we're looking at the point at which the opportunity cost is equal to the marginal rate of substitution. The extra value of something is equal to the extra cost of it. Because if the extra value to us is more, we'll get more. And if the extra cost is more, then we're gonna not get it, we're gonna get less. And so we'll stop when the extra value to us is equal to the extra cost to get it. When marginal benefit equals marginal cost. When opportunity cost equals the marginal rate of substitution. Well, where does that happen on our graph? So we've been drawing budget lines. We've been drawing in difference curves. And we're looking for the point at which the slope of the budget line, because remember the slope of the budget line is the opportunity cost. We want to know where the slope of the budget line is equal to the slope of the indifference curve. Because remember, the slope of the indifference curve is the marginal rate of substitution. So that point happens where they just touch each other once. This is the point at which the, the lines are tangent, meaning they just touch each other once. This is the point at which the slope of the two lines or curves are equal. So our optimal point is where the extra value is equal to the extra cost. And we can see that on our graphs where the two lines just touch once, where the curves are tangent where they have the same slope. So let's dive into that and let's look at our examples. So let's assume that these are the indifference curves for how much you prefer and value video games and apps. We can see that our indifference curves are downward sloping, convex, they do not intersect, 
Higher indifference curves indicate higher happiness, okay? We're then going to combine this with our budget line. So on top of this graph, let's draw our budget line and let's assume we have $300, phone apps cost $2, video games cost 60. So if we spend all $300 on video games, we can afford five. If we spend all of our $300 on apps, we can afford 150. And since I'm terrible at drawing straight lines on a computer screen, I'm just gonna connect these here. So we're looking for our optimal consumption point. Now, we could get one video game and 30 phone apps. We can afford it. But we know, because that's on this lower indifference curve here, we know we could be happier. So we could go here, but we know we could be happier. We like video games, we like phone apps, we want more of them. All right, what about here? Well, at this point here, we are using all of our $300. Okay, so we are still within our constraint, but we're happier here than we were here because we're on a higher indifference curve. So is that the optimal consumption point? Is that the amount of video games and phone apps we are willing and able to buy? Well, is that the happiest we can be? According to our graph here, we can be happier. So notice this point right here at three video games and 60 apps. It uses all of our $300 and to reference our discussions earlier, uh, it's a whole number of video games, not a fraction. Okay. And notice at that point, we are actually on this indifference curve. So if we label these, let's call this one, two, three, four. Notice that this point is on indifference curve three, whereas our previous point was on indifference curve two. So this actually, this combination makes us happier. Okay, we're getting more video games for the amount of apps. But notice we're not over here on indifference curve four because while indifference curve four would make us happier, okay, we can't afford it. So we have to stay within the constraint. So we're looking for a point on the budget line that makes us the happiest we can be. Maximize the benefit given the costs and constraints. You'll also notice that this is the point at which this indifference curve touches the budget line just once. Whereas the previous indifference curve touched the budget line twice. So you know that's not the optimal consumption point. We could be happier. So at this point right here, you'll notice that the slope of the budget line and the slope of the indifference curve are the same. At that point there, the marginal rate of substitution equals the opportunity cost, the budget line and the indifference curve are tangent. So in this case, what we'll call the optimal consumption point is that we will have three video games and 60 apps. We're going to use this information in a later video to help derive the demand curve to look at what happens to the amount we are willing and able to buy as we change price. But right now we're holding the prices constant, ceteris paribus, and what we are looking at is given our costs, including the opportunity cost and our constraint, what combination of these two goods maximizes the benefit to us? Because remember, if we act in our own self-interest, we maximize those benefits given the costs. All right, let's try another example. All right, so here we have our perfect complements we were looking at before of the hamburger patties and hamburger buns, and we have our L-shaped indifference curves that we created earlier. So now let's add the budget line to find the optimal consumption point. So let's assume we have a budget of $4, the patties cost a dollar each, and the hamburger buns cost 50 cents. If we spend all $4 on hamburger buns, we can have eight. If we spend all of our $4 on patties, we can have four. 
I'm just going to connect the dots here. This is where a straight edge or a ruler comes in super handy. All right, so we need to find our optimal consumption point. Well, is that our optimal consumption point? Two buns, one patty. Will make us one burger? We enjoy that. What about two buns and three patties? Well, how many hamburgers does that make you? One hamburger. So the level of utility or satisfaction is the same with those two scenarios. The difference is, is the second one, this one here, uses up all of our money. But can we be happier? So we'll notice here, and remember, there's an infinite number of indifference curves, so we could have put ones in between. Right? So we want to know if we want to maximize the benefit given our costs and constraints, where does that occur? And we see that occurs right here. Now we were looking at this example earlier. You said, you know, you would never buy, what was it? Nine patties and two buns because you're just wasting patties and you would throw that away. So we can see that here because when we look at these combinations, that are kind of outside of that corner, notice that it doesn't make us any happier, but it does cost us more money. And so we talked about how we wouldn't want to waste that money if we're not going to consume it. That's why when it comes to perfect complements, your optimal consumption point is always going to happen at the corner. Then you're not wasting any money on anything that doesn't give you value. So we only buy the buns and the patties we need in that ratio of buns to patties to give us the most amount of complete hamburgers. Notice that there are higher level corners up here, but six buns and three patties, well, that would make us happier because that would give us three hamburgers. We can't afford that with the $4 we've set aside for this meal. So we maximize the benefit given the costs and constraints in this example the optimal consumption point is going to be four buns and two patties. Again, we could start to drive a demand curve by looking at what happens to the amount of one of these goods when we start changing the price. But here we've kept those prices constant and we're simply looking at what's the optimal outcome. All right, let's look at our second special case. In this case, we're looking at our perfect substitutes. Two things that in our mind are the equivalent. They give us the same happiness, the same value. So assuming that um, generic colas and brand name Coca-Colas and two liter bottles are the same to you, then our indifference curves would be these straight lines. Well, let's add to these indifference curves our budget line. So we have a budget of $8. Okay, our, we're in charge of bringing drinks to the party. Brand name is $2, generic is eight. So if we spend all $8 on brand name, okay, we can afford four. If we spend all $8 on generic, we can afford eight. I'm just going to connect these dots to give us our budget line. All right, so now we need to find the optimal consumption point. How many cans of, or bottles of Coca-Cola and generic are you willing and able to buy? All right, so let's start here. All right, for generic, could we be happier? Yeah, okay. Um, let's see, how about there? So here, what we have, what is that? Um, about two and two and three or so, could we be happier? That does use all of our money, but is there an outcome that would make us happier? Uh, what about this one? So here we have four generic, two brand name. Okay, so that is giving us more bottles of drink. Can we be happier? Well. If Coca-Cola and generic cola are the same to you, then ultimately what you care about is having the most you can of the drink in general. So if Coca-Cola costs $2 and generic costs $1, which one will you buy? 
If they're the same to you, you're going to buy the cheaper one. And you're not going to buy a combination of generic and brand name. You're simply just going to buy all of the cheaper alternative. So the optimal consumption point in this case is eight generic, zero brand name. When it comes to perfect substitutes, your optimal consumption point is always going to be on one of the axes. You're simply going to buy all that you can of whichever product is cheaper because to you, these two products are the same.